Hello again, welcome back to another MixLessons.com video quick tip. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about the Haas effect, uh, an interesting little psychoacoustic phenomenon that takes place that you can take advantage of in your own mixes and hopefully uh, find some creative uses for. Uh, for those of you who, who listen to the Tech Muse podcast, uh, you may, this may seem a little familiar for you because I did an episode on it, but um, I just wanted to break it down for, uh, for you guys on YouTube here so that you can uh, also participate in the fun. So. Essentially what the Haas effect is, is it's, uh, it's a way of tricking the mind into um, perceiving a sense of directionality uh, in, in a sound source. So the idea is, in a nutshell, and again, these are quick tips, so I'm not going to go into too much depth, but the idea is, is if a sound is to your left, for example, a sound source is to your left, when that sound hits you, your, it, it hits your left ear a little bit before it hits your right ear. Just the laws of physics dictate such a thing. Well, your mind is capable and your auditory system is capable of um, extrapolating a sense of directionality from that phase difference, that time difference between when the sound arrives at one ear as opposed to when it arrives at the other. So it stands to reason that if a sound is to your left, it's going to hit your left ear earlier than it hits your right ear. And your mind can calculate very rapidly and, and determine that the sound is coming from your left. And of course, vice versa for the right side. So what I've got on the screen here is a keyboard part from a tune that I mixed recently by a band called These Three Cities. This is a tune called Kill Moon. This is just the keyboard part I've extrapolated from the mix just for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, so what I've got, let me just play it for you first so you can hear what's going on here. Okay, so this is just a mono keyboard part, and what I've done is I've duplicated the track, okay? I made an exact copy of the track, and I've panned one of these tracks hard right, and the other one hard left, all the way to the left. Okay, so the result is basically the same as if I had one track. It's basically mono for the most part. And you can hear that coming right down the center of our stereo image. Let's make that a little bigger for you guys here. Okay, so again, we've got the keyboard part up here, duplicated identically down here, one track panned hard right, one track panned hard left. So what, And so there's no Haas effect going on here at the moment. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to take one side of this uh, left-right equation, and I'm going to delay it by uh, a few milliseconds. And, and I want you to have a listen and check out what that does to, um, to the way the audio is perceived in terms of its directionality. Um, this is best done with headphones or in between, uh, in the sweet spot between some nice speakers. So if you want to take a second and throw on your headphones to really get the full experience, feel free to do so. Um, but let me, let me wind this back a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the track that's panned to the right and I'm going to delay it by five milliseconds. Okay, which means that the sound is hitting the left ear earlier than it does the right because I've delayed the right by five milliseconds. You follow me? So if everything goes as planned, it should create the illusion that the sound has just been panned to the left because the left ear is getting the sound earlier than the right ear. So have a listen. We've taken the right track. We've delayed it by five milliseconds. And let's have a listen now. hear that let me set that back to zero for a second see what that see what just happened there it's it's freaky when you think about it let me skip to something with a little more notes let me do that again pan uh, delay the right channel five milliseconds Amazing. So let me set that back to zero. And I'm going to go to the channel that's panned to the left. Do the same thing. Delay that by five milliseconds. And boom, it sounds like I just panned it to the right, although I haven't touched a pan pot, apart from the hard panning of each of these tracks, just to sort of equalize them, you might say. Um, perhaps not the best term. <laughs> you get the idea. Okay, so let's try, let's try that. I'm going to set that back to zero, back to the center perception. 
Let's try that by three mil. Okay, and compare three mil to five mil. Shift it a little further, you'll notice. You're gonna come to find that if you start experimenting with values greater than sort of six or seven milliseconds, that the effect is not as directional anymore. It's more of a widening effect. So let me show you what happens. I'm gonna go back to zero. Let me show you what happens if I go to something like 20 mil. You hear that? It doesn't sound so much like it's moved to the left or to the right, but it does sound wider and bigger. And this is another, there's a little freebie tip for you right there. This is another technique that you can use and it's not uncommon. I go back to zero. And let's try that five mil again. That has a definite sense of directionality. The sound just moved a little to the side. So I hope you can find some interesting uses for that, the Haas effect. And if you wanna know more about it, just Google. There's all kinds of great information online. Wikipedia uh, can get you a little deeper into the science of it. And of course, we'll go into, into it in more depth over at mixlessons.com as well. So uh, jump on over there. And if you haven't already, uh, uh, join the community and we will talk on the other side. As mentioned, MixLessons.com is part of the Tech Muse Academy. To learn more about the Tech Muse Academy or to subscribe to the Tech Muse podcast, visit www.techmuse.ca.